Hey guys, it's Captain Forest here, and today I'm back with a spicy Team Marvel Inverse matchup. In today's video, I'll be going over who I think who wins more often not with these two goated teams. Fantastic Four versus X-Men. The X-Men team will consist of Cyclops, Wolverine, Iceman, and Colossus. Now, before I start this video, please subscribe, leave a like, comment down below, let me hear your feedback. Also, shout out to the Coffee Shop Gang. Links in the description, they make awesome content, and also shoutouts to Phoenix, shouts to HQ Squad of course, shouts to Corin. We all spoke about this matchup and gave our thoughts, uh, they helped me prep and helped me with the script, so much appreciated to them. Also, if you want to support, cash app in the description, and other links will be in the description also. So, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about this matchup, and I'm gonna go over the characters briefly. I'm gonna start off and talk about the Fantastic Four and cover more stuff as I go along through the video. So starting off with the Fantastic Four, so Reed Richards himself, uh, the team leader of course, Reed Richards has the ability to stretch his body. Um, he's also demonstrated the ability to continuously stretch his body when Wolverine tried to slash through his body, which wouldn't cut because Reed continued to stretch his body out to pretty much make up for what was being cut, which was pretty impressive. So. Yeah, Wolverine's like durability neg um, wasn't able to keep up and compensate. So that's a pretty impressive feat for Reed Richards. So if he ever deals with durability negation, he could just make up by continuously stretching himself out. Um, his rubber-like body is very durable. Reed has also tanked an attack from the thing. So he's literally just been flung about before and he, he literally gets up, which is pretty hilarious. So Reed Richards has some really good durability. Um, he can also use his body like a restraint. He does this in character a lot. He likes to immobilize his opponents, especially like um, opponents who are brutes. He tends to like wind himself around them, wrap like, um, like, a, like a constriction, and he tries to just take them out that way. So that's going to round up just the basic idea of what Reed Richards can do. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the other members. The other members. Now moving on to the thing. So the Thing is the powerhouse of the team. He has demonstrated some really impressive showings in regards to his attack potency and durability. He was able to take a beating from Colossus, who was amped by the gem of Sitarak, and he's also fought against the likes of Hulk on a good few occasions, and has taken brutal attacks from Immortal Hulk, who was mind controlled, but was still somewhat suppressed and had a little bit of control. He was also able to damage Immortal Hulk in their fight too, as well as take a, a big beating from him. And lastly, one of the most impressive traits that the Thing possesses within himself is his resolve amp, his grit, his determination, his willpower. So Do Dr. Doom himself explains to the Thing that he um, would be able to break out of some restraints um, by being able to just tap into the hidden reserve of power within himself. The Thing can pretty much amp himself with resolve, um, so when he's pushed to the limits or when his friends and fa or family are in danger, uh, he's able to demonstrate um, some massive, crazy astronomical power boost in AP. Uh, he did this to the Hulk, where at his very limit, he was able to punch Immortal Hulk right square in the jaw, and he one-shots him, knocks him out cold. Really impressive feat for the thing. Now, granted, it did take everything out of him and he even damaged his arm, but that's still impressive. So especially if the thing is pushed in dangerous situations, he will definitely resort to exerting and tapping into that resolve power. So it's very impressive. So moving on to the Human Torch. So the Human Torch has the ability to use fire and perform it in many different ways. He can shoot fireballs or concussive blasts of fire from his hands. He can also perform a giant area of effect and blast out fire from his body. His flames vaporize whatever comes into contact and he has great control over his powers. The Human Torch has been able to raise his temperature from absolute zero and is demonstrated and noted of his most impressive and dangerous but powerful ability called the Supernova, a devastatingly explosive and most powerful attack which is equal to that of an exploding sun. 
So that's pretty much the basis of the Human Torch. I'm going to go ahead and move on. Susan herself, she has demonstrated the ability to turn herself and other people invisible. She can put people inside barriers and control them. She can throw up a barrier to protect herself from attacks. Ragnarok's lightning wasn't able to break her barrier. She was able to pretty much block that with some effort, but it's very impressive. Even like just like Herald tier characters or characters that are way above like those like those force fields that she can put up, they are very durable. She's also demonstrated that she can phase her barriers through the wall. She can also place air bubbles inside your body and in vital organs to affect your insides. She's also demonstrated this by placing two barriers around Wolverine's lungs, preventing him from breathing. And, he's, and she's also demonstrated that she can switch off your optic nerves, which removes your sight, and she can place her barriers around your head, causing you to suffocate. So that's going to round up all of the Fantastic Four members, just a brief and basic understanding and explanation of what they can do and what their powers are like. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about the X-Men real quick. So starting off with the leader of the X-Men, Cyclops himself. Cyclops is very tactical and strategic. He is a master of his mutant power, which is his optic blast, which he can channel and change the level of the potency. He can split his beams and ricochet his beams uh, from objects or people and use them in many methodical ways. So that's the basics of Cyclops. I'm going to talk about Wolverine real quick. So Wolverine, he has his adamantium claw claws. Uh, which are indestructible and he can slice through anything with them. He has been able to slice through Thor and Hulk and he has his healing factor also. Wolverine is also one of the best trackers in Marvel and was able to find and suss out Phantom X who has no scent. He also has his Berserker Rage which gives him a, a 10 times increase in stats and Wolverine has insane willpower um, and insane endurance and durability. He's able to take a beating from Hulk and he was still conscious. And he's also been knocked out by Hulk, and he literally gets up in minutes, so it's very impressive. Now, let's move on to Colossus. So, Colossus's unique mutant power allows him to turn his skin into a durable organic steel state, which increases his AP, durability, speed, and endurance. Colossus has demonstrated to hurt characters like a suppressed Hulk before, and he's also been able to beat Sunspot, who has statements where he can throw a punch strong enough to stagger the Hulk, and he also considers he considers himself uh, a Hulk level threat, and he's even like on an occasion he's even stated that he his power alone even rivals that of Colossus's level, um, which is very impressive. And Colossus also he doesn't require the need to breathe while he's in his still state, so he has some type of self sustenance, which is pretty cool. Now, last but not least, Iceman. So Iceman's unique mutant power allows him to manipulate ice. He can fire ice beams, create ice constructs, and he can also freeze his opponent's bodies on a molecular level. His ice can reach absolute zero temperatures, and he can also breathe in space, and he's able to reform his body from just water and vapor in the atmosphere. As long as water exists, or some type of vapor, uh, he's able to just reform his body, which is pretty impressive. That's pretty much it for all the team members. I'm going to go ahead and break this team battle down. So in terms of speed, they're all pretty relative, they've all been able to fight each other before. I don't really see anyone having a major speed edge, so I don't really see a speed blitz, they're pretty relative. Now from my point of view, I think the invisible woman will start with defense and she will turn herself invisible and try to get in close. Reed Richards is more likely to go after Cyclops from the start, as they are both the leaders of their respective teams. Reed would think it's a pretty smart idea to just take out their leader at the start to try and scramble them and pretty much ruin their game tactic. And of course, Cyclops is very tactical and he's going to try and keep Reed Richards at a distance and try to take him out with his optic blast. Now Wolverine and Colossus will go, up, will go after the Thing. The Thing will punch Wolverine away briefly knocking him out. He will then turn his attention to Colossus after getting punched by him. Now I feel that Colossus will likely lose to the Thing more often than not based on having better AP and durability feats from his fights with Hulk, especially with Immortal Hulk who is vastly, vastly above um, like just the other version of his previous salves like Green Scar Hulk and Savage Hulk. 
uh, the week of hulks that colossus has fought against and even lost so i just see pretty much colossus losing in that situation and also with wolverine i see him getting up to see the thing pretty much breaking colossus um bending him like a like a pipe cleaner this will also set off wolverine to go berserker rage he will run up behind the thing and pounce and stab his claws in his back and will slash and claw the rocks off um, the thing's back and carve through his skin. The thing will try to get Wolverine off him but I see Wolverine honestly going for the kill at this point in Berserker Rage um, and he will either stab the thing in his brain or decapitate him. It's He's demonstrated to do this before when he accidentally like sliced through the, the rocks off his uh, off his like skin so wolverine will pretty much dispatch off the thing invisible woman will witness this and will become motivated and bloodlusted she will seal seal wolverine's lungs with barriers or cover his head in a barrier and suffocate and kill him now wolverine will try to like scramble and like try to fight but because of the because of his like vital organs being compromised it's just going to immobilize him so moving on to Iceman and Human Torch there isn't an effective way for the Human Torch to do anything to Iceman his flames won't be able to deal with Iceman being able to just come back onto the field uh, he just he would pretty much already like deal with Human Torch or at the very least almost be done with him he would leave him frozen in ice and Iceman would pretty much try and aid his other uh, allies. Now, let's say Reed does end up wrapping himself around Cyclops. Cyclops will try to use his surroundings, such as firing an optic blast at a lamppost to ricochet his blast to tag Reed in the face. Iceman can also assist him and freeze Reed in place, which will happen more often than not. Uh, after Sue is done with Wolverine, Sue would then witness her husband Reed lifeless and frozen this would all this will also set her off even more causing her to lash out and try to trap their heads in a barrier to take them out iceman does not require air to breathe he would counter this and free sue's insides on a molecular level saving cyclops from meeting the same end as wolverine in desperation and rage the human torch uh, will flame on and mount through iceman's ice as demonstrated as mentioned he's able to get out of absolute zero he's able to still heat himself up he would burst out and would perform the supernova now in character he would not perform the supernova if he's around uh, like his friends who are alive or like pretty much any of his friends or allies but since they are no longer alive he would pretty much resort to this and especially if he's like bloodlusted he'd definitely be very rational so cyclops with his leadership skills and uh, and pretty much observant um his observational skills he will notice the malice in the human torches uh like behavior and he will give tactical and strategic instructions to iceman to put up a giant ice barrier and an, a giant ice dome to protect him and cyclops from such an attack um now supernova is going to happen on the field he's definitely going to a, a massive supernova is going to occur when the human torch performs this this explosion will definitely melt and destroy the barrier but the barrier i feel is still quite durable to some degree but he'll probably destroy half of it human torch will perform this ability i think cyclops will just about survive it will probably get tagged by the ice or the dome itself some of the like random debris falling from it which would probably like take out cyclops just a little bit like not incapacitate him but he he'd just have minor injuries he'd probably tag his leg so he can't walk properly um iceman will pretty much look at the human torch in annoyance uh, as he noticed uh, pretty much that the human torch has depleted himself via the repercussions of performing the supernova which leaves him drained for hours Iceman's going to be bloodlusted. He's going to be mad that um, Cyclops has been taken down. And he's going to pretty much go in for the coup de grace and freeze and one shot the Human Torch. So, overall, I have to award this victory to the X Men. There isn't anyone on the Fantastic Four's team that can permanently deal with Iceman. 
Iceman and Invisible Woman are both a big threat for each respective team. However, Iceman's stubborn ability to reform from water, vapor and snow is just something that the Fantastic Four can't deal with. Even if Sue can seal Iceman inside of her bubble, he has the AP, he, he would be able to just freeze it on a molecular level and break out of the barrier. In fact, he could overtax Sue because when she uses her abilities, if the barriers or she overexerts herself with the barriers and they're, they're pretty much destroyed or a lot of effort is being applied, it would cause her to pretty much relinquish control over her powers, like pretty much over the barrier that she's sealing her opponent in. So there isn't really a solid way for them to pretty much put down Iceman, and a lot of the other, the lot of the other uh, team members would stand a better chance at some other team members. Like for example, like if Fantastic Four like went up against some of the other um, weaker X Men characters who don't have anything against these types of um, like uh, like obscure or weird abilities, they definitely lose. But more often than not. I have to give victory to X-Men, I'd say it'd be like a mid-high or a high diff maybe, because a lot of the members would definitely get, get taken out, but I think the X-Men have a better chance with Iceman on their team, but anyway, thank you guys for watching, hope you guys enjoyed the video, leave your comments down in the comment section, and of course, it's been real, I'll see you guys in the next one.